Welcome back to the channel everyone. I got a two for for you today. I was out plowing a little snow with my my old boss V plow here. Mine is an 8.2 with wings on it. And I finally did it. Finally broke the tube with the lift cylinder on. This one hadn't been broke yet. Coworker of mine has broke it quite a while ago. But the twofer part is this thing's making that horrible noise that I can't seem to figure out. Now that I got you on the video here, it probably won't do it. But I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna run it on the switch over here and see if it'll make the noise. That got awful racket. What is that? I haven't been able to fix it. Does it more so when it's cold? It almost sounds like a bearing chatter or something. Doesn't always do it. See, now it's fine. If anyone has any ideas, let me know. I'm a get this thing all fixed up so it's ready for next time I'm actually going to pull this cylinder loose so I can take this cover off I want to look at everything inside there see how everything's doing Remember guys, when you're doing stuff like this, when you're trying to put this pin back in, don't use your finger to line this up if you're over here running this control. You will lose it. I've known people that uh, have done similar stuff and they're missing their finger. So use a lineup punch or something. There we can see under the skirt all the components in there. I don't know. To me it sounds like maybe there's an issue with the bearing or brushes in the motor. But I only seem to think about it during the season. And to be honest it, it does it the worst when it's cold which this isn't terribly cold right now but I don't know I've seen uh, videos online where virtually brand new boss uh, plows and back plows are doing the same noise there I'll keep messing with it and see if I can figure anything out. I know it's not low in oil, so if I figure something out, I'll let you guys know. Did a little beating around on that uh, broken piece there. I got it back to being square. Square with the world. Burn that in a little bit and then uh, I'm going to reinforce it a little. Don't mind my welder. It's getting a little old and cranky. Fed him for um 
about 20 years. Found this piece of, uh, I believe it's PTO shaft laying in the scrap mountain. It's got a little dip down the center, which doesn't hurt nothing. I'll put that on top of the round tube. That'll help strengthen that all up a little bit and it won't look too weird. Be able to lay a nice heavy bead in there and that won't go anywhere. Uh, we'll put her about there. Tack it in and then burn it. That tube was airtight. You know, looking back at things, I should have probably brought the cardboard out a little bit sooner. Because now I gotta go get a hose. Wells don't look too bad for all the powder coat fumes that were going up in there. Right there is where I burned through. And apparently I had the tube sealed shut because it had a little pressure and it blew off. But I sealed it back up. Well, I suppose I'll see if I can find a hose. Since I'm waiting for a new hose for my lift cylinder, be a good time to check my pressures. I have my gauge set tapped into the lift hose. Actually, I, I have it completely taken off. Nothing but my gauge set hooked into the lift hose. Here's what they recommend is putting a T and then uh, putting your gauge into there. And then you just go to the full s stroke of your cylinder and then uh, you check your pressure that way. But I have an adapter that screws right in for when I work on uh, skid loader and whatnot. So it seemed like mine was a little bit on the low side. You want to make sure that you have your batteries good and charged and a gauge that goes high enough. Everything on this plow is supposed to be 3000 psi or lower. My gauge goes up to 5,000. Make sure you have decent hose also. This hose is rated to 5,100 PSI. Key on. I got my gauge here. And I'm going to hit the lift. Mine's just a little bit low. They want 2500 psi. Well, when I checked my pressure, it was like 22, 2300 PSI and according to the manual anything under 2500 suggests that the brushes are bad in the motor so I figured I would go pull the motor apart for you guys and I found, uh, found some stuff that I don't really care for but I don't know what to make of it right now The brushes aren't terrible looking. I think they're supposed to be a little bit more than this though. Like maybe 50% uh, more. 
And this one's got some weird wear on it. Like it was cocked sideways or something. I don't know if that helps you see it all. I can't ever seem to get the lighting right for my GoPro. I don't think the brushes look terrible. I mean, they, they could be better, but I don't know if that has something to do with my buzzing noise. It sure might be. Because if it's a... Uh, if it's only running on like say two of these instead of all four it won't have as much power but the thing that bothers me is how this looks that thing got hot All this stuff here just flakes off. It all looks to be intact yet. I guess for now I'm I'm probably just going to clean it up and put it back together. I mean, it's still making 2300 PSI or so. I'm not using it commercially. It'd be good enough for me for a while. Get a few more years out of it. Before you guys go start working on your boss plow, make sure you consult your owner's manual and or your boss dealer because some of the stuff you are working on here if done improperly can be very dangerous or deadly these hydraulic lines you get too much pressure in them they burst puncture your skin or you can have malfunction going down the road and hurt other people so make sure you use some common sense when you're working on some of this stuff. Be safe. Don't be sorry. I got the pump all back in there. Got my new hose on. I rechecked my pressures on the pump. It's still running about 2300 PSI. And I think that's, I'm just going to leave it for now. If it gives me uh, more trouble, then I might look into changing it. Uh, right now I got a, my pressure gauge teed into the right hand wing. Attempting to check the relief pressure. I have it come along on here. And applying some pressure from the tow hook to the edge of the wing out here to see what it relieves at and to me it looks like it's relieving about 2300 psi now if that's a coincidence or not that's about what the pump makes so I'm gonna see if I can uh, adjust it a little bit it spikes higher than that but it settles down to like 2300 not sure if this is the proper way to go about it this is the first one I'm checking you'll want to be careful when you're loosening up these caps because both of mine when I went to loosen it the whole relief valve turn so I'll get a get a wrench on on there make sure that's snugged up and then crack the cap loose in is tighter so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go half turn 
see what happens. That is a half turn. I'd say that's relieving a little closer to 2500 now. I say the spec on this is 2800. I think we're pretty good right there. So this is a fairly old plow. I ended up going a whole turn in. I'll get it set up on the other side and we'll see what that one's like. I got the other side all set up, the driver's side now. And that side is even worse. 2,000 PSI. So I'm gonna go turn this thing up. The other side I went about a turn or so. So this side, since it's so low, I'm gonna start even higher. I'm gonna go like a turn and a half and see where we are. And just remember, you can buy these brand new, supposedly set at 2,800 PSI. I don't remember how much they are. But it's just a spring in here and stuff and some o rings and obviously if you guys have a new and off plow, you'll probably be taking this thing in for warranty instead of messing with this yourself. Boss recommends that you have a dealer look at this stuff. I would guess for warranty claim issues. Because if you go and crank this up to say four or five thousand psi and you start tearing your wings off they're not going to want to warranty your plow I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera, but we're at about 2700 PSI. So I'll give it just a little bit more. That looks perfect. We're right at about 2,800 PSI. I'll get this stuff all pulled off here. And uh, when you guys pull these caps off, there's going to be a little bit of oil that squirts out of there. Must be some weepage in these valves. Make sure you get them caps back on so you don't have an oily mess all over the place. When you're all done testing your pressures here, you might want to check your fluid level, top it off, especially if you blew a hose or something and made a mess all over. I want to save you guys a little trouble here. These fittings here, as a lot of you might know, that American pipe thread, you're supposed to put some kind of sealant or tape on them. These fittings right here, 
right here, right here. Those fittings, they actually seal on the inside of the fitting. When you screw a pipe thread into another pipe thread, just like these cylinders here, then you need the tape on it. But when you're threading it into a swivel, you don't need the tape on there. All these hoses, I haven't ever touched them. They had tape on them. Totally unnecessary. Except on this end, right here. Because this one is pipe threaded right into the cylinder. See, so this one is actually an O-ring boss. There's an O-ring behind a washer there. And this jam nut can turn so you can adjust this fitting. That's O-ringed in there. That does not need any sealant either. That's actually a straight thread. So you could uh, thread a bolt in its place, basically. But these pipe threads are tapered. But they actually, on these swivels, they actually seal on the inside. And when I get my gauge back off here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's that fitting I'm going to take apart for you. We're going to probably have some oil loss in here when I take this apart. This is a Boss V-Plow RT3 with Smart Hitch 2. It's an 8.2 and at least on this model these hoses right here that I'm working on right now I believe they are 42 inch long hoses. They're 3 8 inch hoses 3 8 inch male pipe on the cylinder side quarter inch male pipe on the valve block side the lift cylinder hoses on my particular model are quarter inch male pipe on both sides with quarter inch hose here's that swivel pipe fitting See this fitting in the inside there has a slight taper to it. That's so it will seat in this inner taper here. And this hose also has a slight inner taper. So uh, there was thread tape on here, but you don't need it because it will seal on the inner portion there. That's only with pipe swivels. Pipe into any other kind of fittings, you need the tape. There's, there's no definite sealing path on uh, pipe threads. It's just a taper of the thread getting tighter. So there is a potential leak path. Well, I just got to throw the cover back on this thing and it should be ready to go. Haven't had to do that weird noise since it's been uh, in the warm shop. I'll see if it uh, does it anymore since I had the motor apart. But for now guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. God bless and take care.